Hello, and welcome to our virtual worship service here in Lake Helen, First Congregational United Church of Christ for February 6th, and we're so glad to see all of you here. Um, I have several announcements. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for the wonderful response for our Gift and Go uh, this past weekend. Uh, we had a great turnout, and it was wonderful to see so many of you in person um, at our uh, on our parish house porch. Second, I would like to thank Greta and Susie for their hard work while we were collecting food. They were busy trimming and pruning um, the yard around the parish house, and they plan to come back and do more. They're very industrious. Uh, next, I'd like to announce our book club, which will be meeting on February 24th on Zoom. The book is called The Vanishing Half, and it was written by Britt Bennett. Uh, we meet at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Um, if you would like to have that link, you can talk to me or Ray, and we'll be glad to get you on the, on the list. <clears throat> Next, I'd like to remind you that we have um, in-person fellowship gatherings on Tuesday at 5 p.m. behind Karen and Lewis's home um, with a nice fire and marshmallows and so forth. Anyway, um, we'd be glad to see you there. We socially distance and, um, uh, of course, it's outside. Uh, the second fellowship gathering is on Friday afternoon at 3.30, and we meet on the Parish House porch. So be glad to welcome all of you there. Oh, and of course, weather permitting. Okay, um, the council has been putting together the calendar for this coming year. And if you have any uh, important dates that you would like to add to it, please just uh, call me or um, Vicki in the church office and let us know what dates need to be put on for special events. We have birthdays this month, and I would like to um, wish Cindy Casey happy birthday on February 11th, Betty Bound on February 15th, Frank Hotze on February 17th, and Dorothy Cresswell on February 23rd. Happy birthday, everyone. <clears throat> Also, on Sunday, we have a fellowship hour on Zoom, and that's at 11.30, and um, you can find the link on our church website. So we'd like to invite as many as you would like to come. Uh, we welcome one and all, and we have a great time talking about all kinds of things. <laughs> Next, I would like to ask any of you who need technical help, whether it's how to get on Zoom or how to find the website, if you um, will contact me, um, my contact information is on your bulletin board, as is a whole lot of other information. So please let us know if you need any help and check with your friends in the church and see if they need help. I'm not an expert, but I'm always willing to lend a hand. Let us worship.
Good people of the church, lift up your eyes and see. Our God greets us here. Good servants of the Most High, open your ears to hear. Our God meets us here. Good children of the light, open your hearts and know what it means to delight in God. For we have seen, heard, and known from the beginning to the end. Our God is.
We're reading from the Gospel of Mark today, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. The fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went to a deserted place. There he prayed, and Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Reflections on Mark 1, 29 through 39, written by Kate Matthews. Perhaps the phrase moving right along could be paired with the often repeated immediately to describe the pace of Jesus' ministry in Mark's gospel. Before he even leaves the synagogue, Jesus is already a sensation because he backed up his powerful preaching with an equally powerful act, expelling the demons from a man in the crowd. People are talking about Jesus spreading the word while he quietly slips into a private home, Simon's home, next to the synagogue. Like many families today, Simon's household doesn't fit the usual nuclear unit of one husband, one wife, and their children. His mother-in-law is not only living with him, but is apparently in charge of hospitality, a role that carries its own particular honor. There are many reasons she may have moved in, including dependency on Simon because she had no other male to provide for her, or perhaps Simon needed her help in running the household while he fished. His wife, as so often happens in the Bible, is not mentioned in this story. In any case, the mother-in-law, nameless again, like many women in the Bible, is in a bad way. She's very sick, probably not with the cold or the flu, but with something more serious that manifests into a fever, isolating her from everyone else. She couldn't assume her role as chief cook and chair of the hospitality committee, that is, she couldn't take her place in the community. Mark's prose is sparse as he simply presents the problem and Jesus' response to it, a response that may remind us of something else. He lifted or raised her up. However, in raising her up, he also restored her to her rightful place and role, and she proceeded directly to serve him. Mark doesn't say that Jesus spoke any special words over the woman or that he did anything more dramatic than simply taking her hand. And yet, what a powerful gesture, one that brought her from unholiness to wholeness. P.C. Enos says it might even be said that in scripture, touch is a metaphor for intimacy, for presence, for relationship. Right here at the beginning of his ministry, after dramatic, even disturbing experiences, the River Jordan and the sky ripping open, time in the wilderness, unclean spirits shrieking, Jesus' first healing is accomplished through gentle, even tender touch. Love not expressed, love not felt, Enos writes, is difficult to trust. God knew the human need for nearness. Jesus is the incarnation of God's love, which makes it all the more demanding, if frightening, to realize that for some people, we're the only Jesus they will ever meet. If 
What if you, I, our church, the people within it, are the only Jesus some people will ever meet? Will they recognize him? Much of the commentary in the short text focuses on the healed woman's next move, getting up and serving them. There's no clear agreement about how to view that service. Is this one more woman, no matter how sick she has been, who has to get up and take care of the men who apparently haven't learned to take care of themselves? Some would say yes, and perhaps there is some that would read that into the story. Many others would take a second look, though, for more. They would dig deeper and explore the word used for serve and what that really means. Perhaps Jesus and this unnamed woman are in a kind of conspiracy to show what serving God looks like. Jesus always commends humble service and describes himself as the one who came to serve. Her service was a way of showing respect and gratitude to her healer. More than one scholar calls Simon's mother-in-law the first deacon of the church, and Richard Swanson even turns it into a verb, applying it powerfully to the women who stood at the cross, who had, the text says, deaconed to him throughout his ministry. Moving right along, Jesus has barely had time to enjoy a meal when the crowd, the whole city, has gathered at Simon's door. While Jesus has already broken a rule about healing on the Sabbath, sundown made it possible for the people to carry their sick to this astonishing gifted man. He heals them too and expels more demons from those possessed by them. You may recall the suggestion from a past week to read the entire Gospel of Mark allowed from beginning to end. Such an exercise may be the best way to understand the effect of Mark's repetitive account of Jesus healing the sick and casting out demons. In an age before books or television, let alone DVRs that enable us to play back what we've just missed, the hearers of this story would be drawn into and caught up by the rhythm of Jesus' work, the pace that it takes him from place to place, on his way to Jerusalem. Over and over again, they would keep hearing and seeing and feeling what Jesus is about. Several writers remind us of the certainty of the house churches among the earliest Christians. So this story must have been quite powerful to them, reminding them of a call to discipleship that is expressed in humble service to one another and the world. In On Your Mark, Reading Mark in the Shadow of the Cross, Megan McKenna offers the observation, translations the use of the phrase, the whole world was pressing up against the door. In this new gathering place, the new company of Jesus. Imagine the whole world pressing up against the door of our church. What will they find there? Hospitality? Healing? Hope? Thank you. Gracious God, you call us to follow Christ and spread the good news of your love for all people. Help us to become all things to all people, that we might reach many with your good news. God of the universe, you sit above the circle of the earth, and so we pray for the oceans and mountains, inland water and the air we breathe. Save and protect them, we pray. Since the beginning of our faith, we have looked to you to gather the outcasts, heal the brokenhearted, and bind up their wounds. So we pray for the poor of the world, the sick and the lonely. God, you build up Jerusalem, and so we pray for our country, for all the countries of the world, and for all our leaders. May we come to see that your delight is not in the strength of the military, but in those who hope in your steadfast love. We pray for your church here and around the world. Empower us to go from town to town proclaiming the message of Christ. Everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth, we bless you for you are gracious through Christ, with Christ, 
in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, if you have not done so already, I now invite you for this time of preparing to gather at this table. So please, whatever you wish to use during this time, whether it's bread or crackers or grapes, whether you want to use juice or wine, even coffee or tea, I invite you now to go and have those items ready as we prepare to dine at this table. For this table represents the table of mercy. It's the table of grace. It's the table where Jesus says for us to come as we are, to dine and share the meal. For it was at this table where Jesus gathered with his closest friends, those who knew him well and intimately, those who walked with him and talked with him, and they all gathered for the meal. And it was at that table where Jesus took the bread he blessed it and gave God thanks, and he broke it. And he said to those gathered at the table that this bread represents my body that has been broken for you. Let us now together partake of the bread. And then after the meal, Jesus took the fruit from the vine. And Jesus lifted it up and blessed it and gave God thanks. And he passed the cup to each and every one of them, saying, This cup represents not just my blood, but this cup also represents love and hope and peace. For this cup is for each and every one of you, for all of you are welcome. Let us now prepare to share together the cup of love. And so I invite you to pray with me Loving Creator, God, we thank you for this bread and we thank you for this juice that represents your Son. We thank you that it represents the unconditional love that you have for each and every one of us. That lets us know that we are all truly welcome and invited at this table. And as one, we say together that your Son, the prayer that your Son taught us to pray, and we say it in a language that's familiar with us, and we say it by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen.
May God bless and keep you. May God's face shine through yours. And may the glorious triune God protect and keep you all the days long. Amen. Thank you for attending and viewing our virtual service. These are certainly strange times, and we have had to learn and do new things as we closed our doors to keep the congregation and community safe and healthy. But COVID-19 has not stopped Lake Helen UCC from being the church. We are the church from home. We are always here for you. There are several ways to find out what we are doing and how you can reach out to us in your time of need. Find out what we're doing through our website at lakehelen-ucc.com. That's lakehelen-ucc.com. Or on Facebook by putting in the search at Lake Helen UCC. That's the at sign at Lake Helen UCC. Our email address is Lake Helen UCC at CFL dot RR dot com. Again, Lake Helen UCC at cfl dot rr dot com. Our phone number is three eight six two one eight five nine seven six. That's three eight six two one eight five nine seven six. Thank you. Stay safe. Be blessed.